Welcome to Factorio Base in the Book. My name is Nilas and we are going to do some of the wrap up of uh, this Base in the Book series. Oh no, is it going to end? Well, yes and no. I'm going to end this stage of the base because we're pretty much at a situation where this base is almost complete. And from there, we are going to go into what I would say is more like mega base in a book, which kind of seems silly, but it's something I think will be uh, necessary. I don't know if it's going to be structured as a let's play or it will be structured as a as a series of masterclasses because it will be very heavily focused on the design of each component of, a, of the mega base because it'll be something that's connected to this base. It's going to be ex the expansion of this base into mega base domain. So let me actually know that if you uh, if you have some thoughts about this, whether you would prefer to see things as as a as masterclasses or as a, a let's play or maybe as a combination somehow. Uh, I'll I'll try to figure it out. But it also means that there probably will be sort of a break between this episode and the next one coming up because I need to need some do some preparations. What I am going to do with this one, there are some really important things because we are not ready to start uh, on mega basing yet. What I want to do is, well, this part needs to be upgraded. So let's knock that one out. That's important to get that uh, that done everywhere. Yep, that's a lot of green inserters that I decided to waste. I don't care. Uh, we, we're we basically just going green inserters from now on. Look at that. Looks glorious. What about this one? Yep, you are not really ready yet. That's, co that's cool. Oops, whoops, my robots. Oh, they also went out. Nice. Excellent. And... All of these don't need those, don't need any of these either. So that will be the first thing. What we need to do is if we look down here, I have a plan and the plan is to make an intersection here that will go out to this side, maybe also eventually to that side, but let's see. Uh, also, then I'll be going in here. Maybe actually, you know, we can kind of uh, just draw it at this point just to illustrate what I want to have with it. And then we can go here. This is gonna be sort of the outlines for the mega base. That one, and then I will have one of empty, and then I'll have one, two, three, four, five city blocks of builds, and then I'll have one empty, and then I just happen to have this one right here. There. And what I then want to do is between these two, I'll have builds, and then more builds, and more builds, and more builds, and eventually I'll also expand out to the other side, because the reason is, if you look at this, this is a pretty empty space that doesn't really have anything interesting going on. So that would be an excellent place for me to build a new design. And that will sort of be the core of our mega base builds, using this space here, eventually also going out into that space. Uh, we do have some concerns, though, in this space. If I look at it, we should be seeing that, yeah, we're not getting the inputs the iron is not being mined fast enough at these two locations, so we should get a third one. I'm going to hold off on that because I'd rather have this one be of what I would call the new design. So we're going to be making do with having a bit slower than what I'd like in the space at this moment. What we are going to do now is if I am going to do this expansion out here, expansion out there, there are two things that are super important for me to actually need here. I need to be able to clear the biters efficiently, effectively. Not efficiently, I don't care about efficiency, but effectively. And I need to be able to build my resources down here. So there are three ways to do it. You can either sort of have a global logistics network like in here so that I can I can just issue commands and the robots will rebuild anything in here. Or I can get out here, make a train that will be a builder train that I move out and then I grab stuff from there and then my personal robots will build it. The third option is using Spidertrons and I am going to opt with the builder train. It's more of an old school way, but you know, I'm old school, so that shouldn't be really be a big surprise for anyone that I choose the old school way. The reason why I'm not choosing, you know what, just give me more of those. The reason for me not choosing to go with the Spidertron is because I feel that the Spidertron, although it can work, then I really feel that it is too slow when building and it has two small areas. So you move it to a location and then it uh, at the location, it takes a while to to work. The first thing we need to build is, of course, making, improving our production here. This is what we've done. This is our production of uh, artillery shells. We haven't used any yet, but uh, they should be easy to do. And what I want to do, okay, we're still we're still in the process of upgrading, but it's only like 130 something left. So that's not much. 
What I want to do is I want to make, make this one because why not just use all of these things that we already have again here. Anything else? Yeah, don't copy pipes. Uh, don't copy that one. Don't copy all of the setup here either. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine for up here. And there's some issue with this part. So we'll try again. That one and up here as well. And we'll edit these. Oh, silly. Uh, <clears throat> this one goes out. This one will be OK. Thank you for not having it. It's going to be one of these out. And then I will need to get a. Do I need another another arrow here? Then I, this is a silly thing, I go to my own Twitch chat and find the arrow command so that I can copy it in here. There, that's the arrow. And then I will go with a artillery train. Where's the artillery train? It is here, good. That is uh, the artillery. No, that's not gonna be it. Copy that. Moving up. That one. Now that one was moved to here and I'll take this part out and we had something down here with regards to the water line. So that goes here and here. Good. So that is done. This one will be our building train. So that will just be, I don't know, we'll just do that one. Probably should actually be a yellow one at this point. There, because it's more mega base build. Cool. Moving up, I'm going to do this one first. This one will be the artillery and we need to build an artillery train. Let's see what we actually need for those. We are only going to have one. So I just pick up the stuff that I need for this. And what was it? It was uh, some gears, some steel, some, oh, a lot of engines. All right, engines might be the first thing we need to worry about. That one and up here for the blues. Blue is the best place to steal some engines. Anyway, let's uh, let's build the train. And here is the train ready to go. What are we missing? We're missing some inputs here. This one can contain 100. So if I have six inserters, well, then the six inserters will be responsible for taking what should we say? Let's say 20 each. That means they are always ready to go. That one. There, there, and there. There, that will give us a full train. Excellent. And that will help us uh, get it out. We are working on artillery range. It's not really very much our artillery range, but it'll uh, it'll get us started. That was the one thing. That was the one. That was the easy one. Now comes the more difficult one. We are going to... Oh, okay. We're going to make an expansion train. Now, expansion trains are... Uh, yeah, you can have like different... You can have your own ideas about what you want in an expansion train. The way I do it, and this is like the most... The core feature of how to do it. You must be able to do this part. Click the middle mouse button. Then you can set a filter. If you don't do this, it's just not going to work. Uh, we're we being attacked. Ah, who cares? And then you can do shift right click to copy shift left click to paste and then you basically determine how much you want of each thing in here so let's say this one is for train stuff and what are the things we want for train stuff well that one let's also build some other things that we need to trains let's get some fuel in here now i want to actually get this kind of fuel in here because it has it stacks to 10 while the other ones only stacks to one and although it's better than i could I can feed more trains, just a few rocket fuels by doing it this way. Then I am going to get that one. There will be some deliberate things I choose not to have here. And you're very welcome to have it if you like. For example, I'm going to use so few liquid trains that I don't really care to put in the liquid trains here. And then we have some additional space. We're also going to put like one stack of that. Another thing is don't make more than 12 items. Why 12 items? Because you're going to get... You're going to need that one plus that one to get things in. And if you have more than 12 items, it just gets difficult. You can do like 
if you really, really, really want it, you can do this setup. But then you're stuck using reds like this. That is the maximum number of different items you can get in, sort of without being super quirky and having parallel trains. And yeah, don't even go there. But don't make more than 12. There shouldn't be any reason to make more than 12 in this case. Now, the other things that we'd want to get, I'll just put it in here because uh, there's a bit of room left. I'll put in some inserters. I will almost certainly not use any red inserters because I'm not a fan of red inserters for mega base designs. They're simply too slow. Let's uh, move on to the next one. What are the things we want for mega basing? Oh, we absolutely want some of some uh, some modules and beacons, right? Absolutely, modules and beacons all the way. And I think if I do this, then I get too many. So let me just uh, back off a bit on this and just get a few more beacons. Now, why these specific numbers? I just, I kind of feel that it works pretty well to do that. And so I do that. And maybe you can, you have some different numbers depending on how you want to do, but that this is how I'm, I'm going, going to do it. This one is going to make, so, I want to also be able to do like mining outposts. So I do need to have some things for mining outposts as well. Mining outposts, the way I build them, they take a really a very much, very many much, very many medium power poles. And of course, if we're doing mining outposts, I'll also do that. I am not doing any oil and pipes. Why I'm not doing that? It's because it's not used for many things. And when I do it, then I'll do a specific dedicated build just for that. Here's for building city blocks out in the wild. And then we also need some, oops, some crates because that's interesting. I'm gonna need a few of the logistics parts. I'm gonna use those for internal fueling for my mega base builds. I am going to do that one primarily so that I can feed uh, locations that need a lot of construction drones. That construction drone will be for primarily for landfill areas. Then I can use this train also to feed some of those in. They're not super necessary. You can also put other things like pipes and stuff in here if you want to. And then the last one, I'll have what are the things we're missing? Kind of almost the most important things. Belts, 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 belts. And there will be so many belts needed. There you go. And we also need like a stupid amount of undergrounds. And we need some splitters as well. There. And then of course we're going to need some actually things to build. So here are some furnaces for the smelting and here are some assembling machines for the assembling. There we go. That is our builder train. Looking good. You can pause the video if you want at the different sections so that you can copy it yourself. I don't think we can make a blueprint of it. So uh, sorry about that. You'll have to uh, watch the video multiple times. Wahahaha. Look at that just enticed you or just tricked you into watching the video multiple times. Uh, we are going to do this one first. So what am I going to do first? Am I going to request? Yeah, let's do the requester part. You know, at this point, I'm just going to set up a requester. No reason for us to do that together. It's just request all the things inbound. And so we're ready to build or to set things in. We have done here. Uh, basically what the amounts I've set up is basically saying the request value should be half of what is already in here. So basically, if I request 1,000, I need a 1,000, then I request 500 here. I don't want to have everything requested here because by the time the train comes in, it's probably not going to be completely empty. It might be, but it, it's probably not going to be completely empty. And that's when it comes in, gets topped up with the things that it needs. And if the robots have to fly back and forth, they're going to be flying this short path here. I'm not going to request anything that is uh, in higher quantities than I would I have in my logistics storage because that would not be smart. So this one's getting done. What we then need is we need a targeting device thingy. Uh, this one, a processing unit and a radar. Okay, well, maybe we can find a processing unit just lying around here somewhere. Nope. I can request maybe one processing unit coming right up there. Oh, okay. Well, just request one. All right. Give me one. And with that one, I can make, 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 um, where is it? Oh, it's over here, of course. It's a military thing. That one, processing unit and a radar. And then what we have here is now we have expansion train and we have 
no, that's the expansion train and the artillery train. And those will now start working on. I don't think we'll be doing a lot of this. Okay, so this one is obviously not being filled up because we simply do not have enough modules. That is going to be our biggest issue in this base is the fact that modules and beacons are just not keeping up. Oh, why do I still request those? I really don't want to request these anymore. We are at a point where we don't need this. This is going to be transitioned into mega basing. And I'll do that one back out to zero. And I'll then make one of these, woohoo, which I have conveniently made room for right there. Cool. So this one, I don't really need it. But what I want to do is I want to get my, my train out. And I'm going to build this one for a good place to throw some green, uh, some. I'm actually going to take this out there and there. OK, so this is going to be our artillery location. But if I do that as an artillery location, it's going to overwhelm my not a wall. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just up this one. We are going to get a lot more of these and also repair packs. Let's also get a few more repair packs because that's going to be a lot. And then I'm going to get my friendly neighborhood Spidertron also to go down here because that one will be running interference as well when we get to this point. Did I get it? Yes, I did. Did I get it? Yes, I did. All right, let's go up to our artillery train. What I want to do is we have 400 here and we probably have enough stockpile here at least it's close it'll uh, get started that one we go down there there's a new mod that was made by jeffs that is that I, I should have been added here but i have not which means that when you make a temporary stop when it reaches temperature temporary stop it removes the temporary stop as usual but it then goes into manual mode i think that is super convenient mod to have so i'm really wanting to use that and where is our spiderton yeah we are overtaking the spiderton that was what i knew we are going to make down here, we're going to make a location and it has to kind of be the same as this one. Well, not the same, but the same location. I just feel that's the right thing to do. Yeah, go out. And this one will be Oh, by the way, you are going to go out manual mode here. This one will not be. Oh, no, 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 no. You no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, this is panic. Oh, you are not supposed to do that. Uh, you're not supposed to start killing things and this is going to be south there and I need to hurry up and get this done. Okay, so our not a wall here cannot withstand attacks from these, but if I make them triple lane, which is as much as I can with the coverage here, if I make it further out, then they're not going to be powered. So no, thank you. But if I make them triple layers here, they're going to be just fine. When you use the Spidertron for this, be very careful. Don't have it positioned there because when they come in, your Spidertron will destroy everything. But it's really convenient to have it nearby. Hmm. So that did not actually remove. Weird. And this should be just fine. And I'm going to be making more down here. And you can always remove the triple layer afterwards when you don't need it anymore. But this one, as you can see, we are not taking a scratch. Of course, when the percentage of green biters increases, then they will get in and do like small scratches and stuff, but not much more than that. We're going to be highlighting this. This is a small area that it can cover. So what uh, what I want to do is basically I have this one shooting. And then once it's shooting, I will use the Spidertron to sort of clean up the rest. And especially when we go out to the extended range, then we want to get that. So I'm going to just, uh, what a most important thing here is, uh, now you're going to have like nasty sounds here. Just draw along this line and this is where, yeah, ow, ow, ow. There. All right. So this is where you will go like, whoa, how did you do that? All right. So if you scroll by default, you scroll on the map by dragging the map with the left mouse head, mouse button. I have unbound the left mouse button to do that. And I'm using the middle mouse to, to drag the map. If you un bind the drag the click to drag then you can click to drag the artillery shots instead and that's a lot more handy that's how i do these lines just hold down the mouse and just draw at a nice pace if you draw slowly then they get closer if you draw fast then they get at the larger distance so you can see here i was just slowing down the mouse drag and this is kind of a good way to do exploration it's an expensive way to do exploration but it's a good way to do exploration and what we want to do is make also make a couple of maybe make him another spider zone is actually something I'd want to have. I also want from there I want to make 
What's Python? I want to make my own attack for my attack setup thing, whatever that's called. Let's also make sure that we get these over here. Yeah, so it's kind of forgotten these last parts here. That always happens. Yeah, get that up there. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Why the, where's this not? Yeah, so it has to be in line of sight before I can just deconstruct it. Annoying. And that is actually clearing out sort of all of the area that we have here. What I can then do is I can start again. Uh, what I want to do is I want to clear out this space. I actually want to clear out like a gigantic space, but that's going to take a bit of time. But I'm going to just drag this. It's uh, wasting materials. But for these small ones, I can just do that. Here, just drag some lines just to get some coverage here. And then the idea is that this train will continue, obviously. How many do we, how many laser turrets do we have left? I still have plenty, so we can do that one. Just extend this triple line further down because we will almost certainly get attacks coming in from those angles. Where are the attacks coming? Oh, okay, that's up there. Not a problem. Right? Not a problem, I tell you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Then the Spidertron will then be doing the cleanup duty. It'll just go out here, making sure that all this area is... Oh, that's actually not. That is a deconstruction area. And these, this, this. Spidertron. These are coming in. Oops. You can also do the interception with the Spidertron if you feel that a lot of spam is coming in and you don't feel really safe about it. Like this one, it's just fine. They barely get a chance to shoot. Uh, oops, that is here. So down here, we have still have some spam available or some spam here. The idea is that I take out spawners with the artillery. How are we doing on the artillery? It is not doing so hot. Well, 70. And look at that. Okay, so let's look at this inbound and then see how much of an issue it actually becomes. Whoa, they shot twice. Woo. Well, that was it. Anything that's not green is just evaporating. And this laser turret, laser wall. Perfect. Looks good. Looks very comfortable. We can use this one to go down here and then just clean up the rest. And we do have expansion enabled. So this is just, I don't want to shoot these with with the uh, artillery because it's just too much clicking. So just, oh, wow. Don't hit my spider drone. Wow, that's, I didn't think I've ever tried that. And this is absolutely fantastic at just cleaning up the trash here. But don't send spider tons into like the thick of things then i mean they can get away with it most of the time but it's not what they're built for you are 34 all right let's uh, spam some more out here that one that one that one that's definitely more than 34 and i'll i can take this part here so you can see the Spidertron is patrolling while the laser walls is just absorbing all of the stuff that comes in. Not a problem. This is why I don't bother with walls. Yep. Even when there's a big mass of greens, they'll get a few shots in, but ultimately not really doing much. And the Spidertron here is just cleaning up. Are you done yet? You are perfectly done. Perfect. Uh, do I have more laser turrets? Yeah, I do have a few. So let's just stamp them down because why not? Got it. And anything that needs repairs before we head back? I don't think so. Oh, there's a tiny bit up here that needs repairs. There we go. Because they will be moving towards this. Oh, I need these coming in. There we go. And then I'll be doing 
the stuff I should be this one until empty and then back into that one until full and I'm going to put another condition so why did I do that why oh why did I do that that made no sense right so I want to have basically the inventory full, but I don't want it to go back and forth. I actually want it to be in control right now of when it goes out. So this one just means this will never be fulfilled. And then I don't need to worry about that. The reason why I also add this one is because I'd like to be able to click on this overview and see if the bar is full or not. So that's why I'm doing this. And then I can also do this one if I wanted to just go have it go back and forth all the time and then switch it back here. Then it goes back and waits at the store location. It's not a flawless system, but I think it works really conveniently. Here, let's uh, see this bam. There's a lot of greens in here. Let's see how that goes without any repairs coming in. Uh, okay, they do sort of get in there and they probably destroy a few things. Ultimately, don't care. That's a whole lot of don't care about it. And this train is full. Let's see, it is full. And then if I switch, so it should be doing like this. Then the train goes, back there oh right i was requesting like a stupid amount of these i can limit that again to 200 good stuff and this is basically how you expand we have the spider tron to clean up the trash after after the artillery does the major strokes this one can just continue at nauseam going out here claiming all of this area and then moving uh moving into this space this is going to be some of the things that we want i want to do as part of the wrapping up of this base and then getting started on the next base i'm going to do a dedicated base tour of this base sort of as an intermediate before i start my new series called mega basing in a book that will be sort of more of a tutorial on design of mega base builds it'll all follow city block patterns because hey that's a fun design constraint and it makes it super easy for you to make modular designs because you can just stamp them down next to each other and that is super easy when mega basing Anyway, that is going to be where we wrap up this episode. I am going to, as I promised, I'm going to continue this series and that will be into the next series with an episode for each of the Templars of the Path. And there are still Templars of the Path available. So thank you very much for everyone who's supporting on Patreon. And of course, particularly the Templars of the Path who are putting in an extraordinary effort to support the channel. That is really how the whole YouTube thing here works for me. It's not an ad revenue. It is really the Patreon supporters. So thank you very, very much for everyone who's supporting a little bit or a lot i really appreciate it i hope you also appreciate enjoyed this series but it'll be uh, more i'm not gonna go even go and zoom in because i want you to sort of get that whole flying feeling when we do the base tour follow-up thank you very much for watching i'll be seeing you in the next episode until then take care and you know it stay effective <laughs>